as dollars. Now, we have with us the next generation of Ghanaians who are going into the rugged and sometimes unfriendly terrain of entrepreneurship. The future of our economy, like I said, depends on these. It's Ghana Month, and there's something to be proud of as Ghanaians. So we are showcasing the young Ghanaians we are proud of. Three representatives of the next generation here, Paul Kweku Akrofi, founder and CEO of Real People's Company Limited, an award-winning African products design company based here in Ghana. Jamila Abdelai is the head of Circumspect.com, the creative director and editor of the multiple award-winning Circumspect.com. It's a digital platform and company dedicated to meaningful insight, interaction, and creative action related to Africa and Africans. Also joining us will be Vera Obing, who is the head of Vera Obing Photography. Vera Obing Photography brings a fresh and unique approach to photography by allowing their photojournalistic and inconspicuous styles to capture the distinctive expressions and personalities of their subjects. Before we get into the conversation, though, this is one that will interest you, young businessmen. The Ghana Revenue Authority, GRA, re- re- wishes to remind all taxpayers, companies, entities, individuals, including self-employed persons and partnerships, that the first quarter income tax installment payment for 2019 is due by 31st March. That is Sunday. Because it ends on Sunday, you have till 12 noon Friday to go and file your tax returns. If you don't do that you would uh, attract an interest of 125% of the statutory rates compounded monthly on your outstanding tax. Our Kingdom Monks and Stationery offers a 30-day credit facility with no interest charge, free delivery within Accra, Tema and surrounding towns. So call us on 0302-764-101, 0302-762-307 or visit kingdomgh.com. Kingdom Monks and Stationery Limited, your number one stop shop for all of its essentials, stationery and furniture. Good morning, lady and gentlemen. Good morning. How are we all doing? We're doing good. I mean, I'm, do- I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <same here. laughs> all right, all right. So you, you haven't committed a sin by speaking for <laughs> um, Jamila. Vera will be joining us on the phone lines from Kumase. Okay. Let's begin, well, ladies first, shall we? Uh, let's begin with Jamila. A circumspect.com. What do you do in your business? Uh, So Circumspect is a digital platform and company that I started in 2007 as a blog and we just got incorporated two years ago. And what we do now is we create um, authentic content about Ghanaians focusing on topics like entrepreneurship, careers, lifestyle, policy. Uh, But we also create events and experiences that are geared at enabling young Ghanaians especially to have the kind of conversations that they need to have um, or to learn the kind of things they need to learn, for example, on career development. So we do a lot of trainings on social media, digital marketing, and also some trainings on career skills. Um, And then on the final end is um, we offer digital marketing services to largely small and medium enterprises. Um, So everything from strategy design to some implementation Mm. um, and then also training of, of, of teams. Okay. So beyond the digital marketing and the training, which I assume is done at a fee, Yes. Um, For those who may not know, what's the business model for a website? How do you make your money? (laughs) Uh, So that's, um, it's a very new space. Mm -hmm. Uh, The digital entrepreneurship space is pretty new. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, just like with any other entrepreneur, a lot of it is learning as you go. Uh, But for Circumspect, we, a lot of um, digital platforms that are looking to build a business model tend to go um, with advertisements, paid advertisements on their platform. Uh, But for Circumspect, we don't do that because um, we believe that that kind of takes away from the reading experience online so we don't do pop-up ads what we do is we do um advertorials so if for instance there's a brand or a service or let's say an ngo that has um a product or an event coming up that they want um to highlight we work with them to tell their story so you read it as an article but then it becomes a sponsored article in which case it might have been paid for so but that's very 
that's not really what um, brings in the money. I would say that uh, part of being a digital entrepreneur also means that you have to get creative with how you get the money in. Mm -hmm. So I'm a trained economist, and so I freelance. And so that is really what I do to um, pay the, the bills. Table. Sorry? <laughs> Put food on the table. Yeah, so to speak. So, yeah. So I, I juggle um, the digital aspect, and then I do a lot of offline consulting um, with clients across Africa. And that kind of, that's how I invest in my business and then uh, try to, true until hustler. Ghanaians get onto the, you know, the digital mm bandwagon because I think a lot of us still don't understand it. But then it means you have to leverage off the influence you have built by building circumspect over the years in order for you to offer your services because there needs to be a, a reputation to sell, isn't there? Yes, um, and I think that's um, one of the things I'm thankful for because I've been in the game for over 10 years. Mm. Um, so I do have a personal reputation as well. I've also worked with a lot of very reputable organizations. I'm good at what I do, so I believe people I see, see that. that. <laughs> um, uh, and beyond that, I think it's a question of value. So on Circumspect, um, the content we offer for the most part is free. <clears throat> Um, apart from the sponsored content. Mm. Um, but for the most part, it's free. And it's the kind of content that people can actually learn from and apply to their lives. So I think when people see value, they come back. And that's okay. really um, what, what ends up working out. Awesome, awesome. Let me say hi to Vera or being joining us from Kumasi before I go ahead. Good morning, Vera. Yeah, good morning. Hope all is well. Yes, all is well. Awesome. Please hold the line. Hold on for us in just a moment. Um, let me come back to Paul in the studio. Real People Company. The name alone interests me. Uh, what do you guys do? So, um, you know, I, I get asked this a lot. I mean, I knew it was coming. <laughs> but put, put it simply, we are hustlers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have to be honest with you. Yeah, another, you know, another hustler in this Yeah, thing. yeah. We're, we're, we're hustlers and we, um, our passion is to, to see a certain standard in the things that we make and do here in Ghana and hopefully across Africa as well. Mm. Um, I started RPC out of a passion to, to in a, a passion to believe that quality can come from Africa. Mm. Um, it's, it's been, I don't have as neatly phrased, I didn't have it as neatly phrased as I do now, but that was my driving force, you know, even back in secondary school when I started making things um, back in uni when I was testing things out. And that's what basically evolved into RPC. So RPC is a product design company. We believe quality comes from Africa, and we are pushing that as far as we can. Um, currently, we've we work with a lot of organizations. Um, mm. We have a B two B and B two C model, um, and that's what I'm doing. Where, where B two B is business to business, yeah, business to business. B two C is business to customer to consumers, okay. basically directly to them. So we design our products. Um, the idea for RPC was basically to take locally made products or things that were made here, and then put our own spin on it, and um, upscale them, basically. Um, and then show the world that this is possible from here. Nice. I think that the product's made from here. You know, there are a lot of narratives. People tell stories, right? Um, I think that products are powerful because then they go far. And, you know, when, when somebody sees something, it gives them an impression of where it's coming from. Mm. And I felt like the things that we made here could tell that, could tell a certain story about Africa, a certain story about Ghana, so that if a product is in, it's in the U.S. or it's in the Netherlands or some other space and somebody sees this and says, oh, this is amazing, where is it coming from? He says, Ghana, like, oh, wow. You know, and then suddenly it helps them to rethink whatever ideas or perspective they have about the place the thing is coming from. What are the products you make? So currently we make bags and accessories. I mean, it, the idea was to expand the product line and have different things we put our touch on. But it just seems like this is the niche or this is the space that we found ourselves mm -hmm. um, working on for some time now. And so that's what we do now. There, there's a couple of interesting things that we're working on um, that we hope to put out pretty soon. Um, okay. And so... When that comes out, we'll we are watching the space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, it. of yeah. course, of course. Let me go on the phone lines now and speak with Vera or Bing. Good morning again, Vera. Now, the first I heard or saw Vera or Bing was at her wedding when she decided <laughs> to wear boots. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that they still exist, eh? That story. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, it's one we can't forget. <laughs> okay, but I mean. A lot of people have stereotypes in their minds about photographers. So let me let me not come with any of that. How would you describe what you do? Uh, what I do, being photography is basically a photography firm that is focused on events, corporate, family, and our new addition is newborn photography. So basically, that's what we do. 
Okay, so how has it grown from one person with a camera to what it is now? Uh, we started like eight years ago. It was just me, but later I had more people coming on. Well, not like more, more. We had like four people, permanent workers. But then I, when I need help, I call in other people to help. And surprisingly, all of them are male. I work with all male. <laughs> <laughs> interesting interesting so vera how is this space now a lot of people call photography a very crowded space particularly wedding photography would you describe it as the same surprisingly now yes i think i'll describe it as crowded because with the advent of mobile phones and other things right now everybody thinks he or she's a photographer because they can take something okay so yes it's crowded but then as a professional, you need to work on standing out. Okay, so, yes, it's crowded. Okay, so I have here a message from one of our very ardent listeners. He says, the lady you're about to interview, Vera Obing Photography, is such a phenomenal entrepreneur who is very passionate about her work and does it with such efficiency. I was introduced to her by my friend Tony Senaya of Horseman Shoes in the lead-up to my wedding five years ago, and she exceeded every expectation. She's a testament of the fact that if we better the balance, the world can only get better. Glad she's going higher, wishing her the very best of the years ahead. Yes, and and you see, that is... um, that is why we brought the three of you because <laughs> there are such, it's not just there, there are such good things we are hearing about yeah. RPC, about Jamila and about Vera Bing. Uh, but really, let, let me come to you, Paul, with this one. In the day-to-day, when you are hustling, what are some of the realities you face that people don't hear? Um, so, so day-to-day hustle includes, for instance, um, you know, cost of, cost of operations. Um, so, having to source our materials, having to even sell in our products, um, basically just, just being able to run and run sustainably as, as a business, um, being able to, um, in terms of, you know, how, how we're our funding, all of these things, right? Um, our cash flow, these are all things that as a small business, we, we've had to, it's been a steep learning curve for us. It's been a steep learning curve for me personally, um, to learn how to manage and to run efficiently. And um, this has been basically, this has been a story, right? And my interaction with other entrepreneurs as well, there's, there's just the, you know, let's just, let me just, entrepreneurship can be very glamorized um, or it can be made to look very um, dreamy, but it's pretty tough. Mm. And so sometimes the learnings that you have to make in order to get to where you have to can be pretty steep. Mm. And and so that's that, that's the way to the ground. What's the toughest <laughs> thing that you had to face specifically? Well, for me, working working with my staff, working with tailors, I work with local artisans. I'm okay. in the creative sector, and um, like How I said, how many permanent staff do you have? Just to... so currently, I have three. three. I have and three. what do they do? Are they the those who make the bags, or the other? Yeah, so 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 we have two who make the bags, and then we have one who oversees the production of the bags. Okay. But then more and more, we're we're sort of switching our model to work with other workshops which we partnered with. Um, what happened, like I said, working with staff was, was, a, was a bit of a uh-huh. challenge for so, us. So let's go back to what you were saying, that you yeah. were working with artisans and that challenge in there. Exactly. So working with artisans, um, basically they're semi-illiterate. And so sometimes just understanding what you want them to, to make and um, um, having to learn how to simplify things, which was super important for us because... Um, we have a lot of grand ideas and let's just say I got to understand why it's difficult to make a certain level of stuff over here because um, you're working with somebody and he says you know I've been doing this for 20 years and this is how it's been done you know and you're trying to explain to them well this is why you're not going far you know and so if you come into the space um, this is how we do things and by virtue of following certain um, laid on procedure then we can get the standard we can continue and maintain the standard that we're setting um, and that was a challenge for a very long time. And wow. so we had to relook really at our model and figure out, okay, how do we work with what they already know and yet um, incrementally grow and incrementally train them to, to reach the standard that we are looking for. So that's that's been my journey so far. Um, it's also opened my eyes to so the gaps in our system that need to be mm. um, sort of tackled, um, even, even in terms of certain, let's just say, uh, recruiting, in terms of recruiting new people to work with, 
you know, the kind of people we need to get on board, um, our educational systems. Yeah, just a lot of things that need to be looked at. When we were discussing this earlier, education came up as a very key right. point. And so hold that thought. I'll, okay. I'll come back to that. But uh, Jamila, s- some would say that they won't expect you to have these kinds of problems that Paul had. Is that the case? Or you, you also have your own unique set that you were dealing with? I mean, I think at the end of the day, um, entrepreneurship is entrepreneurship. Okay. Whether you're operating online or offline, um, I do think there's a bit more nuance depending on the kind of work you do and you do. like yeah. who you're working with. So for the online space, uh, one of the things that I have to deal with a lot of the time is just being misunderstood. Mm. Right. Because even just saying you're a digital entrepreneur, personally, I I didn't start calling myself a digital entrepreneur until last year when I was going for um, another workshop. And that was the tag. And I was like, okay, I guess that kind of captures it. But it's that question of what exactly do you do? And Mm -hmm. I get that question all the time. And so if you're working in the digital space and bear in mind, we we have definitely less than about a a quarter of the population is actually using the Internet. Internet, meaning the majority of people are not actually online. So you can imagine how many times you have to explain and try to educate. Paul mentioned education, yes. Educate people about what digital, the digital sphere is about and how you're like tapping into the digital economy. So that's number one. Um, I think it also lends to if you're doing, trying to offer services. So Paul, I think where Paul has a leg up or RPC has a leg up is that they offer products. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to Ghanaians, we like to feel and touch things. So when you have a product, you can say that this is your, this is what I'm giving yeah, you, very, right? Very but when you're offering services or you're offering digital content that people cannot touch, then it becomes you have to be a bit more creative in figuring out how to market that to them and also how to highlight what the value is for them. So that's one thing, dealing with the mindset and educating. Um, Of course, there's also um, more recently I have had to deal with um, different platforms stealing our content. Interesting. (laughs) <clears throat> yeah, which is something I never really had a problem with. But um, just earlier this year, there's, there's, I'm not mentioning the name because I'm not going to give them, <laughs> give them that um, publicity. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um, but there's, there's, there's a platform that um, I think what they're doing is they're syndicating content from across the continent. And so they come on circumspect.com and they literally pull entire articles. They're not just taking quotes. They're pulling the entire article, all the photos, everything. And of course, the only thing they're leaving out is that it's from our platform. Oh, so they don't attribute it to you? No. And so I actually reached out to their hosting company and um, I'm just watching them and I might end up having to be like take some measures because that that's a big problem because uh, time is something that for all entrepreneurs is very precious yeah. and especially when you work digitally uh, I don't think people really appreciate how much time goes into <laughs> creative work um, and especially now that you have the digital space changing so drastically so something I always have to do aside uh, trying to produce content trying to offer trainings okay. aside all of that I have to stay on trend Mm. because the digital sphere changes a lot and it's Mm, not limited to just Ghana. So I'm dealing with globally, Africa and Mm. globally. Mm. I have to stay on trend. I have to watch what's happening with the different platforms. How can we make content more interesting? What kind of content do people like, et cetera? And so I consistently have to be learning at the same time as trying to, you know, get get work done. So that that has been a, a bit challenging. And I think Paul mentioned also the mindset Mm. As in personally, dealing with doubt, dealing with um, if you work in solitude, as I tend to do, I do have one other person on my team who I work with um, and she handles a lot of our social media. Uh, but for the most part, I tend so to. So that's the entire workforce, you and your. This other it's person. the two of us. So what we do is because we are still in a space that is very dynamic and still figuring out our business model. Um, one of my strategies is to try to keep the costs down. Mm. So we do not have an office because we do not need an office. We're online, <laughs> right? <laughs> so my laptop or, or phone is the office. Um, so we don't have that. Uh, but also what it also means is that 
you need to take your time to hire people who get what you're doing and who can offer the kind of quality content that we offer because that's what we're known for. We're known for in-depth quality content. Okay. And so for now, mm. it's just the two of us. Right. Um, as and when we have client jobs that require, for example, a videographer or a graphic designer, there are specific people that we work with. We build a team. Mm. And then after we're done, we dis disband. So anyway, it's a very you know flexible what? model. Instagram ran for a long time with just four employees. So yeah. you are in good company. <laughs> <laughs> I can say that. So I, I, Vera, I have Paul on one side whose biggest difficulty is getting employees to understand what he wants to do. And then I have Jamila, <laughs> whose number one is to get her own customers to understand what she's trying to do. Uh, do you relate with this or you are coming from a, a totally different space? No, I can actually relate with all that we said, especially with working with people to understand what you want to do. Uh, like Paul said, um, initially when I was starting, it was very, very difficult. You get someone to tell me, be a videographer, to shoot it this way or edit it this way. Then he goes like, oh, that'd be... Yeah, and he say I be okay, and he does his own thing. So it's I think one of the most challenging parts is kind of emptying what you you see in your mind's eye into someone to see the same thing, exactly the same thing. But I've been blessed with people who are willing to learn, and can be corrected. So I think that problem has been kept now. But one of my greatest challenges also marketing our services. Okay, um, we came up with something, gift vouchers for the festive seasons, and you go and, oh, you talk to corporate entities and all that, and they tell their people about it, and they go like, oh, daddy, we want oil and rice for the festive season. And it was funny, but we've had people who have supported us. Okay, and selling of our prints, our, our pictures, people don't just get it. How, why should we just buy photos and just put it there? But then, like I said, we are gradually working on a networking. Through networks, we've been able to sell some of our products. And the newborn, like I said, the new addition to our, our services, the newborn photography, it's something that when people see, they like. They really love it. But the newborns, you take newborns um, between, let's say, the first two weeks. Normally, I do it like within the first three days. That's how you can kind of turn them around, do this and all that. But our mindset, we go like, oh, the baby will be cold, the baby will be this. You don't, like the suspicious things that we, we grew up with, you don't bring a baby out unless the baby is one day, a whole lot of things. But I go to the hospitals. You need I like you need to find a solution to every problem that comes your way. So now I've adopted going to the hospitals to shoot the baby. So... Basically, I can relate with everything that they are saying, but this is also something that stands out for. Interesting. Me. Interesting. It's 22 minutes at the top of the hour here on the Super Morning Show. Enjoy. 99.7 FM. My guests this morning are Vera Obing, whose voice you just heard, of Vera Obing Photography. Paul Kwekwakofi of RPC. That's Real People Company Limited. Uh, he makes bags and uh, a number of other cool, authentic African products, and there's also Jamila Mahama of Circumspect.com. Um, hey, Jamila Abdelai, <laughs> pardon me, of Circumspect.com. She also creates um, authentic content. I'm coming back to you, Paul, because I was curious about education, how we are educated, first of all, to be entrepreneurs and to support systems like what you do. If you were to have an ask from government or from any policymaker would it be that education point or you diversify your your demands um i i, I think education is a good place to start from um to be honest with you um i think how we're how we are taught to think in school um and how we are taught to basically look at opportunities and, and season them and solving problems around us is something that's that's a bit missing and and I can share this because I I had the same issue myself, right? Um, I had to I'm ba I'm self-taught in a lot of things, and I basically okay. had to teach myself how to think, um, because I realized that yeah, because I realized that there were certain things that I saw, and the more I saw those things, I realized there was a lot of things I didn't know. Oh, and so I had to put myself on a track to basically figure out okay, what do I need to get myself to where I want to, and that's why it's the learning curve has been steep for me because. You can basically be in Ghana and be oblivious to a lot of the issues and problems that we have. That are right around us, and the costs, um, and the costs 
factors of these things. And um, and so by virtue of that, um, not basically have a proper understanding of how to solve these issues and these problems. For instance, mm. like, you know, I started a product design company and I really didn't know the state of manufacturing in Ghana, you know, and, and why the challenges were. Okay. I, I kid you not, right? Okay. And, and so... Um, these were things I had to learn and these were some of the things I had to figure out my business model and what would be effective over the years and what would make me grow and sustain my business. Um, and so education, um, for instance, so some of the, like I said, like secondary technical schools for me, yeah. that's one of the places that my heart is in right now. People in the visual arts, um, the creative industry is a space that we really need to look into and support people who are coming up mm. um, and to show them that their ideas are valid and that they can make something out of it, especially where the world okay. is going. Jim, let's talk about content creation. Um, creatives have power to tell stories okay. and I'm saying like my product is a form of storytelling okay. and so if they understand these things and we can basically collaborate and, and leverage on their skills then there's a lot that can be done mm. um, so for instance like I need workers right I need people who can understand my vision of trying to create a world class brand with products that can go international I need people who have had a certain level of education that can understand this and have the same passion and want to go along with okay. it. And so, for instance, one of the things we want to do is to train people from secondary technical schools, and even people who kind of dropped out from GSS and have a certain level of understanding, who can okay. understand what we want to do and mm. be into it, right? Um, and so, for me, this is the direction I feel we need to right. go. Right. And, and it's super but important. But it's in the general direction of education. Yes, in the general direction of education. Right, yeah. right, right. Uh, Paul, thank you very much. Jamila mentioned that um, time is an essential commodity for entrepreneurs. For broadcasters, it's, it's life. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm, I'm going to ask you to limit this to a minute. Okay. Uh, what would be your ask? Um, what do you need on, on a policy level? Or if it's going to be an appeal to the average Ghanaian out there? Um, I think that with regards to the government, with regards to the government, I think... Uh, a lot more should be invested in Ghana's digital economy. Yeah. I do think uh, we sh we don't we should not have to be dealing with some of the things we're dealing with by way of infrastructure, mm. and not just focusing the infrastructure in the capital city or in the regional capitals, but trying to expand it beyond that. And while it might seem like it's a it's an expensive endeavor. The reality is that's the trajectory the okay. world is going in. Okay. And you see other African countries that are making, um, African governments, I should say, that are making very strategic investments in um, digital infrastructure, mm -hmm. and they're already beginning to reap those benefits. Okay. Um, the second point I would make is about um, education. Same thing as... as um, Paul said, education, but specifically, our education should equip us with the skills we can run with, right? We should be ready to go after we, we should finish be, school. We should be ready to which go. Which we are not now. Or even if we do not finish school, because I think that um, we have to be realistic and not everybody actually gets to mm. finish school. So throughout that process, if you end up doing two years of, of, of high school okay. or university, how do you run with what you have by then? Right. Um, thank you very, very much, Jamila. And you squeezed Vera out of her last 30 seconds. Um, Vera. Yeah. Great. Um, so can we can we limit your ask to 30 seconds? Um, what would you ask for? Okay. I think um, um, what I would like to touch on with regards to that is for government to just give us a little attention to the arts. Okay. Because way from growing up, uh, when you're asked, what do you want to do is normally doctors, lawyers, and all that. I remember when I wanted to be a photographer, I all hell broke loose. Okay, so if we could just change that from the family perspective through right to our educational system, to also encourage people to also what participate, tell them, encourage okay. them that being an artist is not is actually a very lucrative business that they can take okay. part in. Mm. Thank you very much, Farah. And um, thank you to you as well, Paul Kweka Kofi of Real People Company RPC and Jamila Abdelai of Circumspect.com. Uh, important conversation we had about education. We have Anis Hafa here who would be talking to us about the next level of education as we should have it. But before him, though, um, our friends from Etel Tigo have a very, very important message for you. Stay with us.